Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have 21x to the third power plus x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals 0. And we're going to be finding the x values. Real or complex, all the x values. So, for a problem like this, we could definitely use the cubic formula, right? So I can kind of divide both sides by 21 first. And write it as follows. And then use the cubic formula. But I need to get rid of x squared. I don't want this term. So I need to use substitution. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to replace x with something like this. Let's see. y minus, what is 1 third of 1 over 21? 1 over 63. Of course, there needs to be a minus sign because you have to use the opposite sign, so on and so forth. Oh, man. This is very painful. So we don't want to do that. We want to do something else. One thing to notice in this equation, and I know some of these methods are only going to work with special or certain problems. That's the point. When you see a problem like this, one of the things that I want you to notice is the constant. The constant is negative 1, or it could be 1 as well. So when we have that case, we're in good shape. Because even though this is not a monic polynomial, which means the coefficient of x cubed does not equal 1 when all the integer coefficients are integers, but we can make it monic. How? We can use the reciprocal. So let's go ahead, and obviously you don't want to do that. I mean, if you do, that's fine. Be my guest. But I would like to replace x with something like 1 over u. I'm pretty sure one of you, at least, will think about this idea. Okay, great. So x equals 1 over u gives us the following. It's actually going to reverse everything, so that's cool. We're going to get 21 over u cubed plus 1 over u squared minus 5 over u minus 1 equals 0. The good thing about this is that the constant is not going to change because it is a constant. All right? What can I do? So we can make a common denominator or just multiply both sides by u cubed. I think you should know that x... Um, or u does not equal 0, right? u does not equal 0 in this case, obviously. x cannot approach infinity, so on and so forth. So we can multiply both sides by u cubed. That's going to give us the following. 21 over u cubed multiplied by u cubed. That's going to be a 21. And then I'm going to get a u minus 5u squared minus, when I multiply by that, u cubed. 1 times u cubed is u cubed, right? But that's a minus sign. Okay, no worries. We can go ahead and switch sides or multiply both sides by negative 1 maybe. I could also multiply both sides by negative u cubed, but I just don't like that. It's, it's kind of confusing. I don't know why, but I'd like to do it in two steps. Anyways, so we can go to multiply by negative 1. That's going to give us u cubed plus 5u squared minus u minus 21 equals 0. And guess what? This is a monic polynomial. Yay! Now, what are we going to do? We're going to look for integer roots or rational roots. How do you find rational roots or possible rational roots? Rational root theorem, RRT. Okay, so we're going to be looking at factors of 21. What are factors or divisors? Same thing. Factors of 21. Well, we have plus minus 1, plus minus 3, plus minus 7, and plus minus 21. Since 21 is 3 times 7, the product of two prime numbers, then it should have four positive and four negative factors. Awesome. So you get eight values of u. Eight values of u. Okay, so you've been cloned. So one, among these, one of them hopefully is going to work, and actually it does. So to, to save you all that trouble, I did the work for you, and u equals negative three works. Awesome. Great. So what is that supposed to mean? It means u equals negative three is a solution. But let's go ahead and plug it in to make sure that some, sometimes people may not believe like how, how do you know it works, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. Negative three cubed is negative 27. Negative three squared is nine. Five times nine is 45. That's a plus three. That's a minus 21. This is 48. 48 minus 48 equals zero. Hopefully you're convinced that u equals negative 3 works. But we're not looking for u. We are looking for someone else. No, we're not looking for the letter u. We're looking for x, right? 
how do I find x? Well, x equals 1 over u, which means I just have the reciprocal. Okay, great. So if u is negative 3, x must be negative 1 third. Here's one thing that I'd like to say. Well, this is one of the solutions, but we're also going to find the other solutions. So how do you find that? By using the factor theorem. If u equals negative 3 is a solution, then u plus 3, and we use this idea many times in different videos, u plus 3 is a factor. Now I can go ahead and tweak my expression accordingly. What is my expression, by the way? It is u cubed something something. Let's go ahead and write it down again so you get to see it. u cubed plus 5u squared minus u minus 21 equals 0 is my equation. Since I know that u plus 3 is a factor, I'm just going to tweak this. So kind of like break down the 5u squared into 3u squared plus 2u squared. That's balanced. And then I need to add 6u to this because my goal is to make u plus 3 a factor. And then I have to balance out. Of course, I have to subtract 7u. And then minus 21 automatically comes in. And guess what? This is factorable by grouping. That shouldn't be a surprise because we already knew u plus 3 is a factor. u squared times u plus 3 plus 2u. Happy birthday if it's your birthday, of course. And don't be offended if it's not. You know, it's just for people uh, who has a birthday on this date. Anyways, and this becomes 0. So u plus 3 take out. Uh, inside I have u squared plus 2u. I, what can I do? Like It just keeps coming up. Minus 7 equals 0. So this is my quadratic factor. And from here, u becomes, u becomes negative 1 plus minus 2 root 2. I mean, easy to solve. You can definitely do it. But I would recommend add 7 to both sides and then add 1 to make a perfect square. I like completing the square for some reason. It's how you prove or you can prove the quadratic formula. Anyways, x is equal to 1 over u. Remember that. So let's take one of them, like negative 1 over negative Minus, uh, negative 1 minus 2 root 2, reciprocal of that. I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate. This is the conjugate for the denominator. And their product is going to look like this. Negative 1 plus 2 root 2 is the numerator. And when you multiply these two things, you're going to get the difference of 2 squares, 1 minus 8. That is going to give you negative 7. Double negative, so we can kind of, that's not going to, that's going to make a positive. It's not like, you know, English, whatever. So it's going to be one of the solutions. And the other solution is found by, you know, just reciprocating, or is that a word? By flipping the, the fraction, the answer we got from you, you gave us the answer, right? It's like, and you're like, no, I didn't. So multiply these, you're going to get negative 1. I hope I'm not overdoing the joke over and over. Anyway, so we get the following from here. So those are going to be the other two x values. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now because I just want to show you the graph real quick. I graphed it for you. This is for you, okay. This is the cubic. And as you can see, those are the x-intercepts. It's kind of a huge graph. That's why I kind of took a part of it. Uh, but you can see clearly that the roots are uh, where they are. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.